There are a couple of things I want to talk about in this video. Well, the first I want to talk about this uh, new shape that's coming out. I know I just had the Sophia shape come out, and that one works very well. Uh, but this is another one that's a little different. I am making all my reads with it now. It's really wonderful. And uh, so far it's worked well with most all the gouges I have. And it gives you opportunities of tying it on different size tubes. These are all the same tubes, but I tie them slightly different in length, you'll see. So one is tied at 72, the middle one's tied at about 73, and the one on the right's tied about 73 and a half. And you see it always looks well at the bottom, where it meets the tube, it comes together nicely. And it holds the shape really well when you're making the reed. It doesn't uh, flatten out. Here's a few reeds I made this morning. And they turn out really well. Uh, they play beautifully, really nice tone, very rich, responsive. So it's, uh, it's, a sh it's an excellent shape. It's a better all-around tip. What we're entering now is a different realm of reed making in relation to these different gouges. And, you know, the first video I made was it's about the fork in the road. It's a decent video, and it kind of helps to explain some things, but it's not complete. The real difference in the reeds between Delancey and Mac has to do with the tip. And you'll hear people say that the secret to the reed is in the tip. And this is true. It is in the tip. What does that mean? People are like, okay, what's the secret? Well, it has to do with the way Mac made his tips as opposed to other Tabato students like Delancey, like Gomberg, the way they scrape their tip, whether they realize it or not. I didn't come to this conclusion until recently when I was going to make a David Weber read video, and I've decided against that. But I was looking at his reads really carefully, and I'll show you some of his reads because I had a lesson with him and he made some for me. But probably one of the more important aspects of the read is the profile. Often people look at reads through or down at, and it's not going to tell you a heck of a lot. But to me, what tells me more about the read is the profile, looking at it from this point of view. You watch people make reads and it really doesn't tell the whole story. But there's a split between Mac a Delancey and it has to do with the tip. And the most compelling evidence for me between the difference is the simple fact that most Mac students and Mac players and people that make reads like John Mac can only play one oboe. They have difficulty when it comes to playing a lob and oboe. Now, this is a lob and oboe. But you know what? A lot of um, Mac players can't play Lobbins, and they can't play Yamahas, and they don't play, um, you know, uh, Fox instruments or Covey instruments, and they don't venture to those types of instruments. Why is that? kind of thought to myself, why is it that Woodham students can play many different kinds of instruments? Dick Woodham himself can play, you know, that's where we get the term Oboe of the Month Club, right? He can play different instruments switch from this to that. Why is that, right? It's because of the way they make their reads. I'll tell you that the Mac tip is very isolated. It's an isolated tip. And often people make it, and this is myself also, because I'm guilty of this uh, in most of my videos. They make it from the back of the tip to the front. Make it from the back. This is how most uh, Mac people make their reads from the back of the tip to the front of the tip. Now, I have a theory that Gomberg students, Delancey students, and others do not do it this way. They make their tip from the front of the tip to the back, and this changes the profile of the tip tremendously. And that's where it lies. That's where the difference is. And that's where I think in some ways Mac was on a completely different path. So to give you an example of what I mean when I say the tip is isolated, a Mac read as opposed to a Delancey read, this is what I mean. The read on the left is the Mac read. And the read on the right is what I call the Delancey read. And you can see some differences. So I'm looking down 
This Mac read on the left, what I call the Mac read, has more definition. And not as much here when you're looking down at it. When you look through it, though they look very similar, this read is a little denser. Now it could be the cane, but it's mostly the way I made the read. This tip is thinner overall and not as connected, particularly when you look at the profile. Now they both kind of opened up. You can see the profile of this Mac read. This area is more concave. This area is more straight, tapered. It's concave. And, uh, and that's what I think the difference is. It's not so much looking through the reed, although you can see some differences, and looking down at the reed, you see some differences. It's hard to tell when you look at it like that. They look somewhat similar, the Mac reed being this reed. By looking at it soaked, it sees quite a bit of definition there. Tip is isolated that way, but not as much with this one. And I think that's the difference. You can also see the profile. This is the Mackish reed on the left, and this is the other reed on the right, which I would call, you know, more of a Delancey style. I don't know if it is a Delancey style, but that's what I call it. Tip may be a little longer, a little more substantial in some ways. Very small differences, but profound effects on the reed. If I can show you how to do this. It's really not much different than what you normally do. And what's important about making the read this way is that you maintain this part. That's what you want to do. I'm not saying that people who make reads like this literally start from the beginning and go backward. I'm sure they make them a lot like this, like I'm doing now. It's just that they, to them it comes naturally, right? That kind of read comes na more naturally to them. And it's what they're used to. And you don't have to go too far too soon with this. Now you'll find that when you do it this way, the reed actually becomes really vibrant, which was kind of a surprise for me. I wasn't ready for that. It is. It's very vibrant. Now I'm going to focus on That's what I'm interested in. This. That's what I'm interested in. And look, it almost looks French there. Yeah. Now, I haven't really made that tip very thin, have I? 
There's still a lot of material on there. However, I'm more concerned with the profile. That's my main concern is this profile, that it's a straight profile and not concave by any stretch. It's ready to play it at an early stage. And you could clip it. And you'll have a reed. You'll have a short scrape reed. And some people would say, well, it's pretty much close to being done, and you would be right. And it's just simply because it's got that long, straight taper. Now, I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit. Now, if you're not able to make a reed this way, or you're not able to make a reed the other way, you, you have a gouge problem. You have a, definitely a gouge issue. You should look to get a better gouge, which would be my gouge, for sure. It's good to keep it this way. A long, straight taper. Try for that. The next time you make a reed, try to make a long straight taper like this and you'll be amazed at how well the reeds turn out. And they talk about the tip as being the most important part. And yeah, this is it. Okay. So we're really close now. Now I haven't done anything to the back. I know these other reed makers do, and we can try it. Why not? Stay right in the channels. You know? They don't interfere in the middle of the reed. Let's clip it, see what we got. Let's get it up to see if we can. It's almost a C. And yeah, it's about a C and it's about at 70, 70 and a half. And that's a good place to be at a C, I think, for most reeds. That's okay. Now I'm gonna do just very little except maybe scrape some of the corners. I like those corners to be a little thinner. And then this is, sometimes they, they disappear on me when I do that. And then I might do a little bit in here. And it's more kind of starting from the, you know, blending into the front of the tip is what it is. It's not so much starting at the back of the tip and really grinding forward. It's more kind of a blended stroke into toward the front. And I'm staying away from the center because I want to keep that profile. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it works very well. Because it is, this cane is a bit soft, 
So I might have to just do a little bit more in here. I remember a little goes a long way. You can see that's coming along. I still have that straightness to it. I'm trying to keep some blended material, but also have some definition. And I might have to do more here. That's very close. I'm gonna clip it. And it's really quite a nice read. So that's the Larray oboe. Now let's, let's try it on the Loben oboe. As Paul likes, says it's Loben, Loben, not Lauben. Like I say Lauben. It's like Loben. So it's a Loben oboe, or as most of you may say, Lauben. So it's close, it needs a little more massaging, but it works well in the, uh, in Paul's oboe as well. That's the difference between a Mac reed and this style reed. A Mac reed, I would have torn away at the, the um, area between the tip and the heart. Right here would add a lot more definition. And that isolates the tip. What I'm hearing from players is that when they make, try to make a read like Mac, and they isolate that tip, it really, if you don't have the airstream that he had, it creates issues. And when you put a tip that has a lot of resistance, it's going to change your embouchure. Your embouchure is going to be more AEA instead of Oh, uh, that's just what happens. And the reed really determines the embouchure. I know people would like to think that their embouchure determines their reed and all that, but the, you compensate for the reed when you play it, and your embouchure does that. And if you're playing with a lot of high, with a lot of pressure, with an isolated tip like on Mac reeds, you're going to be pushing a lot harder. That air is going to be more compressed, and you're going to have a different embouchure because of it. So this reed is light and it plays well, it has a nice tone. It kind of plays between the notes better too. Yeah, this reed plays very well. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. It's really a light piece of cane. It's my gouge and my shape. I really like my shape. I think it plays very well. It fixes a lot of the issues that I had with the minus one. This tip will be coming out in about a month, and it's called the Roy EV, so keep your eye on it. In the meantime, I think it would be a good idea when you're trying to make these reeds, like the David Weber reed, to be more consistent with the taper. That will help you, I think, a tremendous amount. Let's see that other reed I had. Yeah, this is my Mac style reed. You can see how defined it is here, right? Now, this reed's a good piece of cane, and it's actually quite a good reed. You can see the definition here is very strong, and um, you can see that there is a little bit more. You see this in here, there's a little more concave action. That creates resistance, and it's weird because you would think that it would not, but it does. So sometimes things that look a certain way don't actually behave the way you think they're going to. I think we get lost in that kind of analysis. This reed is actually much lighter this straight more straightened taper tip here helps with the vibration of the reed overall i hope that helps you a little bit you have any questions um let me know thanks <laughs>